Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In a previous video I had launched the Apollo lunar mission on an N1 rocket, a Soviet N1 rocket. This time I'm going to launch the Soviet lunar mission on a Saturn... well it's not a Saturn V. Uh, because a Saturn V could obviously do it, that's too easy, right? I mean a Saturn V has way more payload capacity than we need. Uh, I decided to go with a Saturn IV. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, there is a caveat. Whereas for the Apollo lunar mission, I took the S-4B along with it, we are not taking the the transfer stage that they had along with this uh, lunar mission because I would rather use the J-2. But, you know, we could, but it would just be less efficient. I don't think it'd be that different, to be honest. But the payload fairing would be really irritating because the payload fairing actually goes around the whole transfer stage for the Soviet mission, which is, you know, inefficient. And but we still have, of course, the block D here and then the lunar landers in this shroud here. And of course, the Soyuz capsule. So, yeah, a little bit of a difference there. I'm still using the J2. And uh, in order to make a rocket that would be better suited for this mission, which is lighter than Apollo, I just duplicated the Saturn II tank and put four F1 engines at the bottom of it. So that's our Saturn IV. Now, you know, at the very least, they would have to move the bulkhead inside because the fuel mixture is not the same, right? This kerosene oxygen is definitely not the same as this hydrogen and oxygen business. But overall, you know, it has a nice feel to it. I thought about putting Titan boosters on the side of the S2 stage instead of using F1s at all. But it turns out that that would take a fair number, more than uh, six might, but it still didn't have enough Delta V. So we'd have to put quite a lot of the Titan boosters. I thought about making just a thinner tank, but that didn't seem feasible. It didn't seem like it was a useful thing. Though we could, you know, make a 6.6 .6 meter tank, make it thin, uh, still put the J2s at the bottom, and then put the F1 engines on boosters on the side as uh, 4 meter boosters. That can work. Uh, I just thought this was more in line with the Saturn motif. So, yeah, we'll try this out. I The question I have is... Can I get away with deleting the center engine on this? Because right now, you know, this still has five engines on this uh, S2 stage. But the reason I haven't done that is because our thrust weight ratio is only 0.79 there. So I don't feel like I can delete that engine and still get enough thrust to weight ratio. However, if we end up with a lot of extra delta V when we get to this stage, then maybe we can underfuel this stage and then get rid of the set center engine, thereby saving cost. So we will see. That That's mainly what I'm interested in right now. Otherwise, it seems pretty straightforward that we can do this. Uh, it'll get off the ground, uh, sea level thrust weight ratio 1.29. The burn time is a little bit less than the normal burn time, but uh, and that might cause problems, you know. We, we have question marks here. It's not a done deal, otherwise it wouldn't be worth doing. So let's find out. Okay, well obviously we only have two Kerbals in because that's what uh, this mission carried. And I think I will line up with the moon and everything. I believe we did launch the Apollo mission from Baikonur on that, on that one. So we'll launch from Cape Canaveral this time. Okay, well, we'll go like this. It's a little bit shadowy, but it'll have to do. All right, ignition. And launch. I mean, my instinct tells me that we should be able to get a lot of extra Delta V by the time we get to orbit here. But we'll see. Uh, you have to go steeper because the burn time on this stage is lower than normal. 
and we need to give the S2 stage time to pick itself up. You know, it starts off with that low thrust weight ratio. So we are going pretty steeply here. That's another variable in this mess. I'm trying to gain more time to apoapsis than I normally would here. Normally I'd aim for a minute and 40 seconds. I don't want too much more though, it's sort of a striking a balance sort of thing. Our thrust weight ratio does get a little bit high, we'll see after this stage what it got to. Okay, separation. And ignition. Okay. F3, 4.4 G's there. Okay, skirt sep. And again, the idea is maybe we can underfuel this stage, making it lighter, and then get rid of an engine. Not, uh, you can see that as it is right now, we can't get rid of an engine. One motivation for wanting to get rid of an engine, except for the fact that it'd be lighter, is that they have to turn off that engine anyway because of the stress on the stage partway through the burn. And it caused problems on Apollo 13, though not the main problem with Apollo 13, but it did cause issues. So maybe we can get rid of that. Alright, I don't know about the launch escape system here, whether it'll actually go off or not, but this will be the time. Okay, it does go off. We are getting a bit higher than I would like. But... We probably need to. Okay, well, we have to shut down the center engine now. Okay, we are in the final phase of the second stage. Way higher than I would like. And separation. And ignition. One problem is these huge fairings. Can we let go of them yet? <laughs> That's uh... That's a good question. Where are they? There they are. I mean, we don't have a whole lot of thrust weight ratio right now. Boo. Okay, well, let's try. Okay. What kind of delta V do we have here? 4,900. It doesn't seem like a whole lot extra, but then again, we're also really, really high. Okay, uh, well, that'll do. 327 by 200. Um, well, we've got maybe 300 meters per second there, but that was the normal margin on the stage. I think we can still improve things overall if we just uh, dump some fuel from the second stage and get rid of that engine. So I'll do that experiment, and we'll see how that works out for us. Okay, so I have taken off an engine from the S2 stage, so we only have four now, and I've reduced the amount of fuel in there so that the burn time is still the same. It's still six minutes. And the thrust weight ratio is a little bit less than it used to be, unfortunately, but the first stage's thrust weight ratio is now more. Now that causes problems at the top end, so I have uh, action group two of the engines so that we can switch two of them off. So we'll only have two engines burning at the end. And that's how we'll deal with that. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So we'll aim for a shallower trajectory instead of going as high as we did before. And this time, of course, we don't have to turn the center engine off on the S2 stage because we don't have one. And will this be enough? Let's find out. Of course, uh, this isn't the most efficient situation because we're carrying more empty mass here than we need to, uh, but on the flip side we're using existing hardware, so it's okay. Hopefully. You know, it's, yeah, I was aiming to use as much original hardware as possible instead of creating new hardware. So here we go, ignition. And 
and launch. I didn't line up with the moon, but I think uh, we're testing mainly to low Earth orbit anyway. Okay, we're through max Q, and this is our current situation. Past Mach 3, at uh, Mach 2, sorry, past Mach 2. Okay, at this point we'll shut two engines off. So now we're only running on two. Alright, let's see what happens with the second stage. I should have put the Separatrons on the first stage as well. Oh, I, I let go of the skirt early. Uh, hopefully that doesn't change too much. And I forgot to pull down the launch escape system. Now we haven't underfueled the S4B stage, so that's still as burdensome as it always was. Alright, launch escape system jettison. Okay, I think we're getting into a much more respectable orbit this time. But there's going to be substantial burden on the third stage here. Okay, and that's it for the second stage. Separation. Ignition. And fairing separation. Well, we, we may have enough here. We'll see, we have to still tilt up and manage our time to apoapsis. Still takes this stage some time to finish up. So I'll actually tilt to 20 degrees right now. Eh, maybe more than that. <laughs> we can afford to go down a little, but... Let's not push it. Okay, we are now close to orbit. And managing that a little bit. It does look like we'll have enough for a lunar transfer. Shut down, uh, 230 by 197, 3,300 meters per second is enough with some leeway. That's good enough for me. So yeah, we get to launch the Soviet mission with a little discount on the Saturn V. Basically a 20% discount. Mm, don't know if it's worth it or not, but uh, yep. Uh, let's, I guess, test everything else out. Well, that's the APS. Let's just separate off the mission here. And we've got some panels there. I guess we can ignite the block D. That's block D and it's verniers. Let's see how they work. I don't remember if I've tested them in 1.8 yet. Possibly. And the side panels. I don't remember when they go off. <laughs> I guess it's all right right now, yeah. Maybe. Oh, the, that stage tank is really shiny there. And there's a Toriel tank at the bottom. It's, this Lock D is sort of neat. Anyway, but this is not what it's supposed to do. What the Block D is supposed to do is to capture the mission around the moon and then start the descent for the... do most of the descent for the lander module. The lander it just does the last power descent and it's mainly an ascent module. But anyway, so that works. Saturn 4, I know, I mean, yeah, the, ignore the designation if you're, if you're going to be picky about that, but <laughs> it's not a Saturn C4 or anything, I, whatever. Anyway, you get the picture. So that was the experiment that works. And we'll talk about doing a N1 moon mission later. Let's take a look at the interior for that purpose. Well, this one's a little bit sparse. Um, let's get somebody in the lander. I mean, there's a tiny window on the side there. I mean, it's not a bad panel, but... But because it's an old craft, it's not going to have the raster prop monitor stuff. Not old as in the mod, but uh, old as in since this is from the 1960s. 
think Raider Nick did not want to put the raster prop monitor in for realism sake. So we are gonna transfer a crew member. No, oh, uh, that's, no, I want to transfer from here. Transfer Jeb into the lander. And let's see what the lander looks like. I mean, that's a little portal there, but instrument-wise, we're very sparse, so I'm gonna have to do a lot of practice and math in order to try and make a landing in this thing, IVA only. I don't even know if that's doable or not. Of course, in real life, they had... well, they never went in this case, but uh, let's say Apollo had mission control helping out and a whole lot of computers back at home. That they did not have on board so yeah but it's a thought uh, if somebody wants to try and do a, a lk moon landing that would be an interesting thing anyway so with that i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time